All right, this is a problem dealing with temperature change, heat involved in temperature change. All right, so we recall the equation for calculating heat associated with the temperature change. And in this case, we're trying to find the final temperature. So on the way to solving for the final temperature, we're going to have to determine what delta T is. So we solve our equation for delta T. And then next, we're going to enter our values. OK, as we're setting this problem up, we want to remind ourselves of a couple things. Uh, change in temperature is going to be the same whether it's, it's, it's expressed in Celsius degrees or Kelvin degrees, because the size of a degree is the same in either one. So it doesn't matter whether we do, do delta T in degrees C or K. Uh, the other thing that's going to make our calculations a little bit easier is to immediately convert in our head from kilojoules to joules. We know we want to do that because joules is the unit that is used in our specific heat capacity. Okay, one more uh, thing we want to remind ourselves of. If we look at our identity we're going to of our specific heat, we're going to use this identity and we can write two different conversion factors. We can say 0 0.129 joules is equivalent to a gram K, or we can write a gram K as equivalent to 0 0.129 joules. The one we use depends on what it is that we need to cancel, the units we need to cancel. Here we want to cancel units of joules, so we're going to use this version of the conversion factor. Now if we look at our units, we see that grams cancel and joules cancel. We're left with our delta T expressed in either degree C or K. And as I mentioned, it makes no difference for delta T whether or not we use Celsius or Kelvin degrees because they are the same size. It amounts to the same thing. So we're set to just chunk these numbers out and get our answer. All right, so we've calculated our value for delta T. Now we know delta T needs to be added to the initial temperature because we know that we're adding heat, so we would expect an increase in temperature. So we can get the final t temperature by adding delta T to Ti. All right, so we've done this. We've added 25 degrees to our delta T, and we get our final value of temperature. We need to round to the nearest um, nearest degree because this number here is only good to three sig figs. So this number here is only good to three sig figs. Now be careful here. At this point we have to make sure we're careful specifying Celsius or Kelvin because this is a temperature not a change in temperature. So since we added it to a Celsius temperature we know that this is the temperature that's achieved by the piece of lead after we've added our heat to it. 